and this, I this, I did this. And she would show up and try to be like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, ah, I gotta pay myself. You know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
dry now. And why I do that, let me show you the UV resin. So what's really cool about the UV resin, and we use this for pretty much all of our rings, is if I squirt a little into this tray, you can see it's liquid, right? It's soft. Clear this off. Just pops right off. So you can see how it's soft, see the drips. But watch this, if I use my flashlight and I cure it five, 10, 15 seconds, this will now be hard. And the reason this is important is when I'm placing stones or watch parts or whatever, check that out. Um, I have all the time I need to get everything in the right spot and then I can cure it when it's, when it's in the spot and it won't move. So if I was using CA, which will work, I don't know when it's going to cure, right? CA just hardens when it wants. So I would have much less time or much less control trying to do that. You know what? Actually, I'm going to switch because we were using the blue stone in this one. So I already have some on the tray. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So we make these stands here in-house, and we make them to hold three because a lot of times you might want to work on multiples at a time, which is pretty handy. Um, so they're made to hold your, your mandrel. But back to the resin. So I can control when I cure it. And that's important because when I have some resin in my channel, I want to make sure that whatever resin, if this is my drop of resin, I want to make sure that it's full of stones. Because if it's only half full of stones and it's half resin, when I cure it, I'm going to have a, a void. I'm going to have a clear spot. And the rings look best typically when they're nice and packed full of stones. So if you're doing stones or anything like that, you want to make sure and fill up all the resin you can or make sure the resin is really low in the channel because you don't want a high spot of clear resin. It'll make it really kind of look odd. So I think we got at least a dry side we'll start with here. So how I like to do this is... I have a little bit of my stone. I'm using this blue opal here. And I'll put a drop of resin in my tray. And the reason we use these trays is they're silicone. So I can cure everything when I'm done and I can wash these or pop all the, the little resin bits out of it and start fresh and it's no big deal. So I like to get a drop on my tip there. See the drip? And I just set that into the ring. Now, let me put my glasses on. At the same time, the tip of my pick here has still got resin on it. So I can come down here to these stones and look at that. I can just kind of, they just stick right to it. And then what I like to do is use my pick and I put it in the resin and I just roll it off. And I've been doing this all day and my hands are shaking. All right. So then I get a little more. And I'm just filling up all that resin that I have in that channel. Does that make sense? And if I get to where my stones are not coming off of my pick, a lot of times that means it's too dry and they're just sticking to it. When I have the resin, the liquid, it kind of flows in there. So now what I'm looking at is I'm looking on both sides of where I've got the stones and making sure there's not a bunch of resin on there. And there's not. So now I'm going to bring in my light. And I'm going to cure it. And this first one I want to cure really good because this is what I call the dam. And when I'm rolling my ring backwards and I'm filling the stone as I go around the ring, that dam holds my resin from running over the edge. So take a look at that. Wow. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah. So that's just the, the opal in there. And now I'm ready to go. So I can go either direction. Uh, I tend to just roll it back a little bit. And I'll dip in my, get a drop. You can actually see the drop on there probably. And this is a nice wide ring. So these are actually pretty easy. The, the narrower rings are more of a challenge because you've got less space to work in. Now I'm going to use more opal for the wide ring, obviously. But I can sure see it a lot easier than the thin ones. So I'm going to just put that in there. And I'm just going to kind of move it. I'm going to use my pick to push it around and see I'm kind of sliding them back and pushing them in 
because I want to really pack it in there. Now, one really, really important secret is I want to keep my stones below my edge of my ring as much as possible. Now, the first time you do it, don't stress out about it. Just do what you got to do. You know, if it's above, it's no problem. It'll still work fine. But if I can keep those stones below the edge, what happens is I get a lot of clear on top at the end. And the clear magnifies the stones. It makes them look bigger. It makes them look shinier. And it really just creates a better overall shine than if I had stones at the surface and I was sanding or polishing through the stone. And really what it is, it's not that the stones aren't shiny because they are, these are opals, but it's the inconsistency of a stone and then resin and a stone and then resin. So you get a, a different look. Whereas if it's all resin, it just looks like glass. So it looks really, really cool. So I'm just going to keep filling in my stones all the way around this guy. And when I get it to where I think it looks good, I'm going to cure it. And see, I've got about, what, half an inch now, would you say? So I've got half an inch. So now I can move a little quicker. I can even actually put my resin, instead of using my drop, I can actually put a dot right in my channel with my dropper. And we use this dropper because it's dark, so it doesn't allow our resin to cure. And it's a nice squeeze feature for getting your stones or your resin into your channel. So I'm just scooping up those stones, laying them in. <coughs> Excuse me. And see, it's easy when there's a little bit of stick on the end because they just kind of stick to it and you can just roll them off. Now, when we do classes, we provide uh, tweezers and paintbrushes and whatever so you can try different things. But most people, I would say, end up using the pick because of this method here where you can roll them in there. And, you know, there's always different ways to do it. We see people where they'll just kind of put glue or resin in and, and then dump the stones in. And that's fine. It works. Um, but that's that where you don't get that clear near as much. So we're taking a little more time this way, for sure, but we're actually going to get a much, much shinier ring, and it's going to look really good. So see how quickly we can move around the ring? It's not too bad. And you'll get faster and faster at this as you, as you practice. Um, after you've done a few of these, you can make a ring generally start to finish in about a half an hour. Which is isn't... there different um, ring-like designs you can do? Yes, absolutely. Good question. The question was if there's different ring designs. So this is this is just a channel. This is an eight millimeter wide. There's actually different widths. So you'll see some that are really narrow. Like that's a four millimeter compared to that eight millimeter. See how different that is? And then there's actually even really cool designs like this. This is called the ISO ring and it has all these little triangles. And this is a brand new ring we just released this week. But you can actually make I was working on one here, a six millimeter wide. You can see the different colors. I have to polish it, of course. Yeah, how do you use this? That one, that is a, a material called Fordite. And that is a bunch of layers of paint. And we put the ring inside of them. And then we just polish it up really, really well. Do you have to turn that one on the Yep, we do. Absolutely. Actually, that one we actually turn a little more than some of these. A lot of these channel ones, we're just going to polish and sand. So the other one we turn. Now, see, I, uh, I put that bigger drop and my resin kind of ran on me. So what I'm doing is I'm putting stones here on the edge to fill in all that resin that's trying to run around the, around the ring. And now that I got a bunch of stone in there, I'm going to cure it. And that'll keep it from dripping anymore. So it's kind of cool how you can control this stuff and make it, you know, do what you want. You have to wait before <clears throat> turning it on the layer? Uh, not very long. So this is UV resin. So we're using UV light here. But what I like to do is set it out in the sun because, you know, being in Arizona, we have great UV light. 
and the sun will have it rock hard in about 10 minutes. And then we can go right to the lathe. So there's not a lot of waiting. If you didn't have the sun like we do, you can use a, a UV light booth or a UV curing booth, which are pretty common. Yeah, what, what's the question? Um, they said, I've used UV before, but usually as a finisher, when setting bigger stones, do you worry about the UV under the stones not setting up because the light can't get to it? So the question was, if I am using UV on a bigger stone, and I, am I worried about the UV curing under the bigger stone? Typically, I am not worried. And the reason being is the bigger the stone generally, Typically, the light will get in somehow. It, that's why you see me go like this with the light a lot back and forth. And what I'm doing is trying to make sure any little passageway of potential light I'm hitting. So when I do this a lot, you'll see me go back and forth. And the reason being is that as long as the light can get under there some way, it'll work. Now, UV also will start to cure... Um, as I cure the surface, it's going to start to heat, and that will help cure the stuff that is hiding. It won't cure it on its own, but it'll definitely get it going. So it should be okay. I've never had one fail for that reason. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, of course, but I haven't had one fail because of the, the stone blocking it. Now, if you used any kind of mica or dye that stopped the light from going through the resin, you definitely could have non-cure issues. But for for anything stone, the chunkier stuff actually seems to cure better because it doesn't block as much. This finer material really blocks because it fills in so many little cracks and crevices. So I hope that answers that question. All right. So when I've got this much opal piled in here, if it's being difficult on me or not trying to lay down flat, a lot of times I need more resin. So I might put a little drip right on top and it'll flow all the way around these stones and it'll help them kind of settle down into the, the ring. So if they're sitting like crunchy on top of each other, it might be that there's not enough liquid to make them flow into their spot. So I'm kind of just pushing them around until I like the way they're laying and making sure I don't have any holes in my, my pattern. And look at this. What do you notice when I put the UV light on it? It looks purple. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So the UV kind of changes colors. You'll see a lot of times you have like a glow powder that you didn't know was there. Although I knew that was there, but a lot of times on my fingers, I'll UV and there'll be glow powder. And I don't know where, I haven't touched glow powder for months. <laughs> no, it, no, no, no. What it means is there's glow powder on everything that I touch, like my flashlight and my pick and my workbench. So you can see I'm actually almost all the way around here. So we're going to be done here in just a few. And this hasn't taken too long, right? What do you think? Could you do it? Yeah, I actually want to get the material. Okay, okay. I like hearing that. Pete's like, oh, great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, I think it's great that she's wanting to get on the lathe and everything. Hey, something you can do with her? That's so cool. Yeah. We actually have a lot of parents and kids or grandkids and kids or grandparents and grandkids, said that backwards, uh, doing this, which is really cool. We had a couple last night that did it, Pete. If you guys have as much fun as they do, you're going to be loving it. I'm going to have to get you into one of the classes before we buy the kit. Buy yeah, the kit. there you go. Yeah, so we do have a kit, since you mentioned that, um, that includes all the stuff I'm using here. The stand, the mandrels, the UV resin, the bottles. It comes with brushes, tweezers, all kinds of stuff. The only thing it doesn't come with is the rings because obviously they're size-specific. And the inlay is very specific because if I pick the inlay, it's probably not what you're going to want to make. Um, but it has all these tools for doing this. So you can get started pretty easily. 
by getting a kit like that. Now, of course, you can buy them all separate just as you need them too, and that's fine. But this is a good way to start if you just want to get jumped right in. So you see I'm going back and forth, and I'm rotating the ring to get different angles. And you guys see how shiny that looks? Isn't that cool? Will it smooth out? Yeah. So we're going to talk about smoothing. Come on in, guys. Don't be shy. We're going to talk about smoothing here in just a minute. Feel free to grab a seat. Ted. Um, so right now I'm trying to stay below the rim, remember? So at the end, I want to fill it all in, and I actually want to fill it in and go above the rim, and that's how we get it smooth. So we had a couple come in late. Uh, sir, we're making a ring here, and I'm just doing an opal inlay ring. And th that was my last piece. Here's some, uh, so you guys can look at what we're making. Thank you, sir. All right. And so now I, I've gone all the way around. So I'm going to cure this. And I'm going to give it just an extra second here. All right. Take a look for me. See if I missed anything. What do you think? Is it supposed to look like hard? Uh, not quite yet. Okay. Just just the stone. We just want to make sure we're full in the stone. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. So it looks pretty good. Okay. Now you asked about this way. Yeah. There you go. Nice. So you asked about being smooth, right? So it looks kind of rough, doesn't it? All the way around here. Now the trick for for getting it rough is remember I talked about the channels and we want we want the stones below the channels but now we need to fill that clear in so our two sides here we want to actually make sure the resin is over the sides so we want to go above it and what I'm going to do is use my dropper bottle here right and I'm going to just get a drop started and I'm going to kind of use the pressure of the bottle and the gravity and I'm just going to kind of roll it around and I'm not squeezing a lot out, I'm just barely squeezing. And I'm just using that to push the drop. And if you look, it's going to start to sag on the bottom. Do you see it on the bottom? But I'm going to just keep rolling it. And what I'm going to get is an arc on my, my rim. Okay. There we go. And when I get it to where it's rolling, and I think I've got all that space filled in. Do you see it drip there? That's okay. Then I can cure it, right, just by hitting it with the light. So I want to keep it moving. And now I should be over the top of my rims. All right. I can smell it curing. Okay. So now if you look, see it doesn't look rough anymore? So it's just arced over the, the edge of the rim. And now we would cure it fully in the sun or in the cure box. And then it's ready for the lathe. So that is the building of the ring. Any questions on anything? Yes, Amy. What store are you using? I'm using an opal. In our store, it's number 27. It's a real awesome blue opal. Um, but it really has cool blues and greens in it. But here, you guys can pass that around. So that's kind of where this part stops, and then we would cure it. Uh, and then from here, we would go to the lathe, and we would do sanding. We don't actually turn it with tools. We just would sand it down and then polish it. And that's pretty much it, because the sanding and polishing is what cleans everything up. It cleans the edges. And it makes it really, really shiny. I don't know. I think it is. It is. Right? It's not too bad. Well, you see the black all over the edges yeah. and stuff? Like, all that gets cleaned up with the... And the sanding doesn't affect the, kind of the silver part of the ring. Good question, Pete. So he asked if the sanding will affect the ring. It actually won't. It'll actually make it shinier and shinier. So when you're sanding and polishing, you want to hit the sides and want to, you know, get the edges because it comes out like all those... We're sanded and polished just like that. 
So and what that's kind what, of grit are you starting? Yeah, are you out doing a wet sand? Or a <clears throat> yep. Sand? Yeah, we do all wet. Uh, we start with six hundred. That's our aggressive grit. We do six hundred until it's flat and smooth, and then we polish. So you would use micro mesh or zona paper, uh, whatever your polishing preferred method is. So that is how you get it very shiny. So it's a pretty simple process. And it's a lot of fun because you can do this part anywhere with just, you know, very minimal things and a couple stones or watch parts or whatever. And then you can always go to the lathe when you have time. You know, Rich has a desk job, so you could do this at the desk all day. I'm, I'm just kidding. He's construction. He works hard. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But you can do this anytime, and the rings are fine to sit until you get time on the lathe. So, you know, if you don't have a lathe, or if your dad's not home, you could work on this. And then when he gets home, you guys could go out and polish. So there's a lot of options for this. You know, if you're traveling and you like to do something when you are just got idle time, it's pretty cool. So a lot of, lot of very fun things to make with this. And the, you make, uh, like, you know how you print labels and put them on the pen? She's thinking place. already. You, yeah. can, you can totally do that. Really? Yeah, absolutely. If it'll fit in the channel, you can do it. So you got some ideas, I can tell. Good stuff. Any other questions on there, Amy? Okay, so that's where we're going to end the live stream. Uh, if you want to see the sanding finishing process, uh, on the YouTube channel, we have several of these videos. Um, if anyone local wants to see it, you know, we can do it sometime. We do have classes if you're interested. But uh, all this information is available, and it's pretty, pretty cool to do. Thank you, Chad. All right. If you have any questions, let us know. Oh, thanks, Carrie, for the clapping. You're welcome, Bob. All right. I think this one's going to look really good, don't you? Good choice. Really pretty. You picked the blue. Thank you. Thank you, stranger. I do have a question. Was any of these, rules, was any of these rings in the way ruled them all or in the dark or find them? Uh, only one, and okay. I'm not going to tell you which one. That's okay. the one we just made. Yeah, this is like that. Yeah, that's, is that the opal? That's blue opal, yeah. That is so oh, cool. That's I like, have I would like say a rainbow. My favorite. But the black will go away. The black on the edge will go away. That's what we painted the base with. So what's the difference between like that and then like this? Like, is this this is ceramic. This one is steel, stainless. Oh, so we okay. have, <clears throat> yeah. If you guys, so this I, is the ceramic. We have ceramic. We have steel. But we you have, could do that opal in the ceramic. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Oh, because then it's got like a black trim. What's yep. this? Fordite right here. Uh, these are fordite here. Okay. And what's this? This is ceramic that's got a beveled edge, oh. so it gives you that faceted Textured. look. Yeah, that's cool. Well, like here's a good example. So that's a ceramic mm -hmm. versus a steel. So you just get different looks with yeah, different colors. Yeah, yeah. And then these are all the same, except that's red painted back, black painted back, blue painted back, but all the same method. Yeah. So you can do the ceramic like different sizes too? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's double channels. There's double channel ceramics. Mm -hmm. There's single channels. Yeah. A lot of options. Thank you, everyone.